welcome to chemistry class let us start today learn the topic IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds you know that with the development of organic chemistry a large number of organic compounds have been prepared now in order to systemize the study of organic compounds so many attempts have been made to frame certain rules to set, classify them and give their names so the compounds today have common names okay generally the name that was given after the name of the source from which the compound was obtained okay and after having those common names a system was generated to classify the organic compounds in a systematic way and this was done by the international union of pure and applied chemistry they developed a new system of naming compounds and today this is known as the IUPAC nomenclature for the organic compounds okay so this system of nomenclature was first introduced in the year 1947 and was modified from time to time so the most exhaustive rules for nomenclature were first published in the year 1979 and later revised and updated in the year 1993 okay so now let us see what are the general rules for IOPAC nomenclature okay now according to the IOPAC system the name of an organic compound consists of three parts here you have a name okay and this consists of three parts first part is the word root second part is the suffix third part is the prefix Now, what is this word root? Word root represents the number of carbon atoms. What does this represent? The number of carbon atoms. That are present in the chain. For chains containing up to four carbon atoms, that means C1 to C4, special word roots were used and for the chains containing more than four carbon atoms from the c5 onwards greek numericals are used okay now what are the suffix the word root is always linked to the suffix suffix is before it was not in the common name in the iopac name the suffix was linked the suffix contains primary and secondary okay then the third part of naming the organic compound according to the IUPAC system is the prefix okay now let us understand what is prefix? Prefix indicate the substitution of other groups in place of hydrogen atoms in the compound. Okay, they can be regarded as the substituents or the side chains. What they can be regarded? Substituents or the side chains. Now let us understand more with the examples. So first uh, we will understand about the word root. Okay. The word root says that it is enough represents the number of carbon atoms present in a chain. So let us see the chain length, the word root. Okay. Let us make a column here and we will then do it. 
chain length that means number of carbon atoms this is your chain length and here you have the word root if the number of carbon atoms in a chain is one that means c1 the word root is mid c2 it okay c3 so it's going to be prop c4 but c5 pent c6 hex c7 hept likewise you have c8 oct c9 non and c10 dec okay c11 undec C12 dodec, C13 tridec, C14 tetradec. Okay. So likewise, the word root has been made. Now we will. Uh, now we'll do what? We learn the suffix. The word root is linked to the suffix. So in a uh, uh, nomenclature of the compound, you have word root. This is the word root. Then you have suffix. and prefix. So now we learn the suffix. Suffix are two types primary and secondary. Okay. So primary suffix indicates the linkages in the carbon atoms. For single bonded carbon atoms, for single bonded carbon atoms, the primary suffix is AM. For double bonded carbon atom, the primary suffix is EN. For triple bonded carbon atoms, the primary suffix is, can you guess? Fine. This is I. Okay. So, general name for the primary suffixes alkane for enes is alkene and alkyne okay this is these suffixes are derived from these general names so if the parent chain contains two three or more double bonds or triple bonds, then the numerical prefixes such as di for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4 are added to the primary suffix. For example, for um, double bond, you have di in for um, 3 double bonds, you have tri in. Then for uh, triple bond, you have di, in. For three triple bonds, you have tri, i. Okay. So it may be noted here that the extra a is added to the root word if the primary suffix to be added 
begins with a consonant for example mm -hmm. other than the a e i o u for example for two double bonds if you have two double bonds right in a chain of carbon atoms we have two double bonds the suffix is diene and if it is to be added to the word root but like you have four carbon atoms so if you have to if uh, this suffix diene is to be added to the word root but okay so for carbon atoms it becomes what it becomes but a di e so this only i said that an extra a is added to the word root but for prefix di e sorry suffix di e okay now let us see the secondary suffix secondary suffix represents the functional group in the molecule what does it represent the functional group in a molecule okay now it is added after the primary suffix okay so you have primary suffix and then secondary suffix the common secondary suffixes used to represent the functional groups are for alcohol you have oh aldehydes ch o ketones this is your carbonyl group carboxylic acids c o o h then uh, acid chlorides you have cocl acid amides conh2 esters cor what i am telling you you know what these are the functional groups nitriles c triple bond n amines nh2 and thio alcohols sh fine so for um the secondary suffix for the alcohol is ol ol for aldehyde al for ketones you have an on okay for the carboxylic acid this is oic oic acid for acid chlorides you have uh, oyl chloride likewise acid amide you have amide then for the esters you have alka alkyl o8 for nitriles you have nitrile for amine you have amine for thiol alcohol thio alcohols you have thiol okay so today we have learned uh, till the, the secondary suffix for the iupac nomenclature yeah under the topic iupac nomenclature for the organic compounds to understand more about the chemistry topics to learn and practice more chemistry questions just visit like share and subscribe chemistry class thank you all the best